So welcome to Whippoorwill Holler. I'm Miss Lori and this is Mr. Brown. We live in the hills of Arkansas. We love the Lord. Keepers of the old way, but accept some of the new. We love to cook and we love to eat. We love to garden. It's in our blood. It's how we stay sustainable and fill our pantry. We do a lot of canning and preserving. We live a sustainable life. We love our family. We work hard. And every once in a while, we like to dance. So y'all join us. You know, today it's not even about a recipe or anything like that. Today is just y'all in here in the kitchen with me. I just got home from work. Put on my comfortable clothes. I'm getting ready to cook some supper. It's probably getting on about five o'clock. I usually don't get in till way after five, but I got to go and come in just a little bit early today. This really ain't like I said about a recipe. Y'all just gonna come in here. Sit with me, visit with me while I cook supper. Um, watch me cook, see how I do it, see what I'm cooking. But uh, it's just a simple meal. We don't eat like this every night. I know a lot of y'all think that we do, <laughs> but we don't. Me and Mr. Brown do not eat a bunch of fried foods or stuff just smothered with gravy and all that stuff every night. It just don't happen. But tonight, since we haven't had any heavy meals here lately, tonight we're going to eat some fried pork chops. And I'm going to fry up some cabbage. We're going to have some okra. And I'll probably open up a jar of my canned uh, purple whole peas or something like that. We might even make a little bit of cornbread. I don't know yet. We really don't need the bread. We try not to eat much bread at night, especially. Uh, we're not big like as far as sandwich bread eaters unless we just happen to be eating a sandwich for lunch or something but uh, of course we do love homemade bread but i don't have any made right now <laughs> so that's good because that don't tempt us so we'll see you know see if we really need that bread tonight but anyways i got my cabbage cut up over here and i'm gonna go ahead and get it started get the right burner on. I've got a little bit of olive oil in here. I'm going to put me just a little bit of butter. I hope y'all had a good weekend. Me and Danny went and watched my oldest grandson play basketball. Pretty sure it was his last game tournament. I'm going to put about a tablespoon of butter in here. And uh, they didn't win, but still, you know, they've done good, and they've done good all year, so. You can't, you can't win them all, even though you want to. I just got my cabbage just kind of sliced up, shredded up. This is about a medium-sized head of cabbage. A lot of times I'll just boil it up, but we haven't had any fried cabbage in a while, so I've kind of been wanting some. Mr. Brown really loves fried cabbage. I'm going to let that butter melt. I'm going to go in here in the pantry and get me some peas. I'm going to go ahead and put my cabbage in here with my oil and my butter. I'm going to take me some pepper. Take me some salt. I'm all 
also, I've got some onion over here cut up. I'm going to go ahead and throw that in there. You know, sometimes I forget uh, that I've got caramelized onions canned up in my pantry. I think I still got a few jars left. And I could have threw that in there after I had that cooked down just a little bit, and that would have been good. If you never can caramelized onions, <coughs> excuse me, I've got a video showing you how to do that. If I can find it, I'll put the link below in the description box. <coughs> <coughs> You know, it seems like any time <coughs> I'm going to cough that I start to talk, I, my throat gets scratchy. And I, sometimes I think it's this wood, uh, wood stove. And I wouldn't trade it for nothing. You know, we have a big kettle that stays on top of a cook stove with water in it. And I have a humidifier too. But it seems like <clears throat> I get home, my throat just gets kind of scratchy. But like I said, I like my wood heat. Now, right now, I'm going to leave this alone. I'm just going to let it cook down before I add anything else to it. Now, I've got, I've got some okra that I put up. Me and Danny love okra. And okra is really good for you. We like it just about any ways you can uh, cook it. Danny likes it just boiled up with maybe some uh, canned tomatoes in it or something. Um, we love it in gumbo, of course, and we love it fried up. So, we love it in our soups, too. But we're going to fry it up tonight. And all I'm going to do, since it's already in this bag, this little freezer bag, and what I do during summer, we grow our own okra, is uh, I don't really like it getting very big because it starts getting really tough, is I cut it up and I'll lay it out on a cookie sheet and I flash freeze it out in the freezer, then I'll bring it in and put it in bags. And sometimes, and a lot of times, after I do that, I'll roll it in cornmeal. And, or just kind of, you know, put the cornmeal in there and swish it around and freeze it like that and it's already just throw in your skillet and it works. I've done that for many, many years. Now I'm going to tell you what I'm going to put on this okra. You all may think I'm crazy. Um, this is hush puppy mix. It's got a little bit of onion uh, in it, which is probably onion powder, of course. And a lot of times I make my own hush puppies, but I also love to buy, and a lot of y'all probably use it or you've seen it at Walmart, it's, uh, I think it's uh, Autry's Hush Puppy Mix, A-U-T-R-Y-S, something like that. It's in a red bag, and uh, I think that's the name of it, and it's one of my favorites, and I always keep some in a jar right here. It's not like we eat hush puppies all the time, but I love to t make up some hush puppies when I've got a big pot of beans because I love eating hush puppies with my beans. But anyways, I'm going to put this on my okra before I fry it up instead of just plain old cornmeal, and it's really good. It just gives that okra a really good taste. <clears throat> and since it's already in the bag, I'm just going to put some in there like that, in the bag with my okra. I'm going to put a little salt in there. Uh, I'll put a little bit of pepper. I don't really put a whole lot. And it's already got the onion powder in that hush puppy mix, so I don't need anything like that. Now, I love to taste the onions. And I put it in everything, just about everything that we eat that I, that I cook, it's got onions in it. If it don't have onions in it, it's got onion powder in it. You know, my grandma loved onions. And I seen her 
sit down and bite into an onion like it was an apple. And I can remember her kitchen always smelled like onions because she just had onions everywhere. She just loved them. She was always cooking with them. Okay, you see how I've got that hush puppy mix on that okra just like you would cornmeal. Just gonna give it just a little bit of different taste. You know what? You can take this hush puppy mix and you can even put it on your pork chops and fry it up. Be good. I've got a little bit of bacon grease here before I forget. I'm gonna get some out and put it in here with my cabbage and then I'm going to use the rest of it in my purple whole peas. And I've got some fresh rendered lard right here. I'm going to put, I've already got just a little bit of oil in that pan. But since I'm going to fry these up real good, I'm going to put a little bit of fresh lard in there. I'm going to let that skillet heat up. You know, I've got an older video talking about lard. Um, and I know it's very controversial, but it's not for me. But it may be for other people. But lard is not bad for you in moderation. I do not use synthetic cooking oils. Oh yes, I used to. But the one oil that I do use to fry up fish and stuff, if, and I've always got lard, but I like peanut oil, and y'all heard me say that's what I use a lot of times. I know that uh, it's not organic or nothing like that. But since we don't use it every day for consumption, every day is fine in moderation but i like my my fresh lard okay that's starting to wilt and after it really starts wilting down i'm fixing i'm going to add some garlic and then i'm going to add a little bit of brown sugar to it and that's going to really caramelize it really good i'm going to go ahead and put my okra in this pan before the pan gets too hot We had a bunch of rain come in early, early this morning. Storms. Um, there was some damage in Arkansas. Nobody heard or anything like that. Not sure about tornado or anything like that because I ain't heard anything. But then, <laughs> it's Arkansas weather for you. I think it's tomorrow evening. We're going to start getting ice. It's already starting to really get cold. And we're supposed to get a bit of ice and sleet, I guess. So here we go again. So I'm going to let that okra just cook a minute. And I'm going to get rid of this in the trash. And I know some of y'all are going to be saying, I can't hear you. You don't have your mic on. No, I don't have my mic on. It is over here. It is on. Now, a lot of times when I fry up my pork chops, I don't always flour them. Oh, yeah, I love, you know, good old pork chops with that good crust on it, but I don't think I'm going to do that because I've already got my okra over here and I'm just going to season my pork chops up. I'm going to show them to you. These are fresh pork chops. They're not real big, but they're fresh and they are delicious. I always wash my, the blood off my, my pork. But... You see my pork chops. I'm going to season these up real good. And I'm just going to 
cook them in a skillet just like this. I'm not going to put no flour on. Now, usually I would. Tonight, I'm not going to. I'm going to be just a little bit, a little bit better about it. About all that flour and everything I'm using. But anyways, we got more ice and slate coming. And you know, I know a lot of people are probably wondering about if I've started my seeds and all that stuff and everything out in the greenhouse. Um, a lot of y'all would think that I'm probably behind, but I'm not. I haven't started all them seeds yet. We've got several months that we could have some really cold, bad weather. So I don't get in that big hurry. Last year I did, just like I usually do, and my plants got too big and needed to be planted out, and uh, I did, and of course we had two frosts after that, and I had to go out there and just frantically try to find enough to get all my stuff covered, and I don't want to do that. Now I did have row crop covers for, you know, stuff like your... Uh, broccoli and your cabbages and your, you know, your brassicas. They, I don't worry as much about them. I do throw one of my row crop covers over them. My lettuces and stuff that were out, and they done just fine. But anything else than that, I don't get in a big hurry here in Arkansas. To, not in this part of Arkansas. And if you're new to my channel, we live in the north, the northeast corner up there, kind of. And, uh, we can have frost come up in April, and I can remember a couple times, twice, I think uh, my oldest boy was little, and uh, then one time I think when I was younger, we had snow on Easter, so we was hiding Easter eggs in snow. That was kind of fun. Okra up. I just like to uh, leave it alone and let it get kind of crispy on the bottom, kind of like you would hash browns before I really start messing with it much. And here's a can of my, or jar of my purple whole peas. Y'all seen me can these in a video. And it did lose some water, but the beans are still okay. There's nothing wrong with them. You can add a little uh, more water to it when you're warming them up because they're cooked. They're in there. I'll go ahead and get them in my pan here. And I'm going to add just a little bit of water to it because there's not enough juice, no more water in it. But like I said, the beans are still really good. I'm going to scooch them back here on my back little burner. Turn them on low. I'm going to put in a little bit of pepper. And I'm going to put me a little bit of bacon grease too. Now I've got another jar of bacon grease in there, but I need to get rid of this one. I'm hoping that I can get it maybe a, some kind of dessert in in this video. We'll have to see how the night goes. <laughs> We'll have to see. When Mr. Brown comes in, we'll see what he's got me doing to see if I can get some dessert done. So I got everything but the pork chops on there. And 
and I'm just gonna take my pork chops and uh, nothing, just simple ingredients. I've got salt and pepper and garlic powder. I got me just a little bit of grease in there, not a whole lot, a little bit of oil. I mean lard. You know, we were hog farmers, my grandma and grandpa. We ate a lot of pork. Y'all heard me talk about that. I don't know how many times a week we had pork we had like that. Now he sold his hogs and of course he butchered his own hogs too. And I can remember that huge can of rendered lard that was set over there in the corner of Grandma's kitchen with it. And um, it had a yeah, it had just a, a tin lid on it. But it was set there and set there, and we didn't have air conditioning. And it seemed Bill Kai. I mean, we used it. But I do keep my rendered lard in uh, jars, and I keep it in the bottom of my refrigerator. And that's how I keep mine. You can freeze it, and you can even can it uh, if you want to do that. some um, lavender and I've got some rosemary hanging up there and it fell on me. I hit it with my head. I always have some kind of herbs hanging in my kitchen. Now I know you're probably wondering why I'm putting brown sugar in my cabbage. I don't put a whole lot but I just put a little bit and it just gives that cabbage a really good taste. kind of caramelizes it and it just it's really good. It's not something you have to do, it's just something I do. So just a little bit. My offer is starting to brown. I'm gonna kind of stir it a little bit. It smells so good in here. My skillet's getting hot. I'm going to put these little pork chops in there. I like to leave the fat on the pork chops and let it render down because it just makes them chops taste so good. Try so hard to keep my stuff washed up as I as I cook. Sometimes you don't have time to do that. Sometimes you do. Now, I don't know if y'all can see that, but that cabbage is starting to brown. That's the way I like it to look. I don't want to put my fresh garlic in here just yet. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to season the other side of my pork chops. You know, there's sometimes, and I'm not, it don't even bother me to, to tell you, but there's sometimes that me and Danny get in, it'll be 6 o'clock, you know, we've been gone all day, he gets up at 4.30, I get up about 5, and uh, 
I used to go in with him. Now we drive separate uh, because there's just things that I have to uh, take care of after work before I can get home. And uh, of course, he's got to be there at work. He's got to make sure that all his drivers come in and nobody breaks down, that all the kids get home. I mean, he's transportation director mechanic and bus driver and he's just got he's got all that responsibility he's got to be there so that's why we get in so late and why we have to be there so early but uh, sometimes we'll just come in and we're not really that hungry and we're tired and we eat a bowl of cereal and sometimes we might come in and i might make a, a fried egg sandwich um uh, i might make us uh, some uh good you know some hot cereal i may make you know grind up some wheat berries and make us some good porridge especially in winter time and uh, eat that with maybe a piece of toast i mean not every night is a meal like this and then there's some nights that we try to really watch our carbs and stuff like that and we'll eat a taco salad without the chips or anything like that or you know just anything like that we may just eat like a, a piece of meat and then some broccoli with no potatoes and no bread so i know <laughs> i've had comments of people you know saying some pretty rude things thinking that you know well, this is just the way we eat and it's just horrible and all this stuff i'm a pretty healthy woman considering and uh this is the way that my family has ate way like danny's family's ate his mama fed seven kids and uh we all seem to be fine. We might be a little bit plump here and there, but we're not like in bad shape or just bad healthy or nothing like that. But like I said, we eat like this in moderation and not every night. I'm gonna get me a little bit of garlic, fresh garlic. I got me about a tablespoon of minced garlic. You don't have to put that in there or just put half of that if you want to. And when all this gets cooked, I'll throw it to you. Mr. Brown's going to really like this fried cabbage. It's just one of his favorites. Like I said, we ain't had it in a while. So. My okra's over here. And I don't put a whole lot of grease in the pan. Just enough to kind of cover the bottom. Because I don't want my... My oats are soaking up all that, that grease or lard or whatever you use. But if you have to, you can put just a little bit more. So I was talking a while ago that we're, we're supposed to get all this ice and sleet again. And, <laughs> you know, I know we, we really need, you know, snow is great. But we don't need ice, really. And the only thing that worries me about that, because we don't get out in it. And uh, if it's bad enough, the buses don't run, we don't have school. But uh, it just worries me because so many people end up in the ditches. And when it's that cold, it's so dangerous. So I really hate seeing the ice and sleet come in. The snow don't bother me. And I got me a new cutting board. And it's not like I needed one. I really didn't need a new cutting board, so I got plenty of them. But this one just kind of 
drew me to it, I guess. And I had some points with Amazon. And I just went ahead and got it. Um, I'll bring y'all over here and let you look at it. It's not a real big or real thick cutting board. But it, it fits over your sink. And if your sink is little enough, it would fit there. But mine's, it won't fit there on mine. It just kind of hangs over and it's got this thing right here that fits down in there. And it's got holes in it. So, whatever you're cutting up, onions, bell peppers, or strawberries, or just whatever, you can put them in there and then you can just take this and you can rinse them off. So you just, you're just cutting away and you just put your your veggies or your fruit right there out of the way and then just clean them and rinse them off. Anyways, if y'all want information on this, I'll put it in my Amazon store. But like I said, it didn't cost very much and my points bought it, so... Another cutting board for Miss Lori. Y'all want to see what's going on here. Everything's a frying up, cooking up. Doing good. A lot of times when I've got thick pork chops like this, I'll brown them so much on each side, and then I'll stick them in about a 400 degree oven for just just a few minutes and finish them off that way. In fact, I think that's one of those days. Maybe 375. Let them brown on that side a little bit, and then I'll stick them in the oven for just a little bit. My okra is browning up good. Everything's looking good. You see my cabbage, how it looks? It's cooking down. It's not burnt now. That's the way I like it. Just like that. When it starts browning like that. But this cabbage is almost done. We'll be turning it off. In fact, I'm going to turn it off right now. I only got two small of a pot for my beans. All I got to do is warm up, though. So, I'm going to be making... <laughs> I'm just taking y'all everywhere, aren't I? Okay. Now you can see. I'm going to back you up just a little bit. Like I said, this ain't your regular video. You're just kind of here with me. Um, I'm going to start making iced coffee. And I used to do that years ago. I'm not a big coffee drinker, but Danny is... Um, Y'all know he likes his cowboy coffee. I love the smell of it. Now, on Saturday mornings, when we're not in a hurry to do something, he'll make some coffee, and we'll go sit out on the porch, and I will drink a little coffee with him. 
Um, but I love iced coffee. And I want to go through the procedures of making some really good iced coffee and making it to where you can, uh, where you can make quite a bit and, and put it up and not have to continuously make your coffee for your iced coffee. But I got me some 8 o'clock. This is dark Italian espresso beans. I gave my daughter some of it too because she loves iced coffee and she'll be making her own iced coffee. And I've got a coffee grinder. And uh, so if y'all are interested in uh, me showing y'all how to do that, I will. Because there's a certain procedure you got to do to make good iced coffee. You know what I think? I've got something in the oven. Oh yeah. <laughs> As usual. Got a bacon dish in there. I'm gonna, I got me and Danny, uh, you know, I said we went and watched my grandson play ball Saturday, and he played in Paragool, so we went a little bit early, because we weren't for sure where the school was, the middle school, but uh, we went to some flea markets. Got some chicken feed here. Cabbage leaves and onion. I did find a few things. Um, of course, I didn't need no cookbooks, but y'all know me. If it catches my eye. This is a book that I would, I wish I had time. I hope I have time to sit down and read it. And I would love to read it and read it to y'all. It's called Country Chronicle. And I guess maybe that's the author, Tiber. Some of y'all may have already read this book. You know what it's about. Gladys Tiber. Country Chronicle. And I think it's just more or less a book about her life. And, uh... Gladys Tiber, 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 T A B E R. She uh, she tells a story about her own cookbook. She lives, uh, I guess, maybe around Cape Cod. But anyway, so there's just lots of stories in here, and I love these kind of stories. So maybe, maybe we can sit down and read it together. I've seen these cookbooks, and uh, I love Italian food, and I do have plenty of Italian recipes, but, um, you know, it never hurts to have a few more, and there's some really, really good recipes in here. It's called Country Italian Cooking. Something keeps falling out of it, and I give a dollar for it. This one is Leon's or Leone's Italian cookbook. Jean Leone? I'm not sure. But he is on the back of the book. I paid a dollar for it. He was in the restaurant business. Enjoyed every minute of it. He was born in Italy. But anyways, I can't wait to sit down and just look at it. Read it, read it. The recipes, look them over. Some of them I probably will never cook, but you never know. There's always one or two in them you will. I'm fixing to turn these pork chops off. Because they're pretty much done. Yeah. 
I'm going to stick them in the oven just a little bit. Did y'all hear that? That means somebody just drove up the road up the driveway, and I'm going to say it's Mr. Brown. That is a security bell that warns you when somebody's coming up your drive <laughs> or leaving out one of the other. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a little bit of my hush puppy mix and I'm going to fry us up some hush puppies. Not really hush puppies in the little rounds. We're going to make it like fried cornbread. I got me some lard on there. Because all I have to do is just take like one cup of my hush puppy mix and about a half a cup of water. And just mix that up. You need to get it a little bit loose, so looser than you would if you were making hush puppies. Just a little bit looser. Mr. Brown's come in from work. We heard your your alarm go off when you drove up the driveway. The ding dong. I didn't put no wood in the stove because it looks like you need to take the ashes out. So. You are correct. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know. Oh, Pocket full of eggs when you get rid of. Pocket full of eggs. You didn't have your egg bucket with you? That's probably a good tablespoon of lard. Should be plenty to fry some of this up. Like I said, I'm just going to fry it up like fried cornbread. Let that get hot. Mr. Brown's taking the ashes out of the wood cook stove. I knew when I got in not to put no more wood in there because he would need to take the ashes out. I could have done it, but I waited. <laughs> if you've never done this before with Hush Puppy Mix, it's really good. Especially when you got some fresh peas or some brown beans or white beans that you cooked up. And there'll be plenty of this left over for him to take for lunch tomorrow, too. So that's always a good thing. Are we supposed to still get some bad weather coming in tomorrow? Yes. Tomorrow afternoon and Thursday. Chance.
I'll show you how I make my sweet tea. Everybody's got their own way. Now we do have well water, but we have a lot of lime in our well water, so I always filter my water. Now I don't want to get this just scalding hot. I do want to warm it up. And I use Lipton tea. That's just my favorite tea. Um, I used to order cases of tea from Amazon. And it was a British tea. And it was some of the best tea. And they don't sell it anymore. So I went back to my Lipton tea. Tea bags. Of course I grow my own tea too. And I have it dried and put up. But every night when I come in I make us some tea. So I'm going to get this boiling just a little bit and then I'll turn it off and then we're going to seep our tea. This for me? Okay, I think my water's plenty hot. Like I said, I don't want it too hot. This is a half a gallon tea pitcher. I'm going to take my two bags and uh, that may be too stout for you but it's not for me. I like my tea. I mean I, I like to taste the tea. I don't want just real light tasting tea. I like it dark. We're just going to take it and just kind of steep it. Some people do it for just so long, but I'm going to let this steep for just a little bit while I get the rest of the stuff done. Everything's pretty much done. I got my, my little hush puppy fried cakes or whatever you want to call them, cornbread-like looking things, fried, fried up cornbread. Got them done. The peas are warm. Everything's done. So we're about ready to eat. Okay, for our sweet tea, this is half a gallon and I'm going to put half a cup of sugar in it. Yes, I am. Because that's the way we like our sweet tea. been steeping for about six minutes. I'm just going to squeeze that tea out of there. And this is how we like our sweet tea. I told them we didn't eat like this every night. <laughs> we couldn't eat like this every night. No, we've been really busy in eating the meal. This cabbage needs to be cooked. That's one that's my favorite right there and one of my favorites. Fried cabbage. Purple hot peas is what we put up last summer. Was it summer or fall? I can't remember now. Well, I've done it. Fried okra. And this is some of that fresh pork. Mm. 
that was still left, pork chops. From that hog that we had? Mm-hmm. You can tell it's good, ain't it? Mm hmm I told him, I said, sometimes we come in and we're so tired but so late that we don't need to be eating that late. And we'll just eat a bowl of cereal or a fried egg sandwich. I'm thinking about going there and making a cobbler or something. I don't know yet. We can have cobbler for supper tomorrow night. <laughs> I might have a bite of it after a while. Then I was telling them we got bad weather coming in. And that I hadn't got any of my seeds planted yet. Did you notice anything today <clears throat> along the side of the road? I didn't notice it yesterday because I mean I've been looking, but I noticed it today and they're everywhere on my bus route. I noticed out here around these <coughs> trees are um Daffodils? Yeah. Yes. <coughs> Several old house places all over my route today there was daffodils. Full bloom. Full bloom, huh? Mm -hmm. These aren't full bloom out here. They're still trying to come up. These were bloomed today. That's what made me notice them. I got to seeing them yellow daffodils, and I thought. Then I got to looking for them, and there were several places. Well, I'm sure there's places in different states that's probably they're coming up. Because, you know, where my friend Michelle lives... She was showing me it's going to be in the 70s and 80s. <coughs> I told her I was going to move with her. Oka Kanofi? <laughs> swamp? It ain't too far from a swamp because there was alligator down by her house not too long ago. And then Miss Vicky, she had eight inches of snow and I think more coming. We're supposed to have ice. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. I haven't heard lately, but I did hear like maybe up to a half inch, and we don't need no half inch ice. No. We're hoping it misses us. That causes people's electric to go out. And then so I was thinking about some kind of dessert tonight, and I thought this would be a good time. I've had several, several people ask me to make the chocolate mayonnaise cake, the old-fashioned chocolate mayonnaise cake. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I can get it whipped up pretty quick and get it in the oven, and then we'll make some uh, really good chocolate frosting for it. So let's get started. So what I've got in my bowl right here is I've got my dry ingredients. Which is my three cups of flour. And my two and one fourth teaspoons of baking powder. And my one and a half teaspoons of baking soda. Now there's no salt in this recipe. So I'm going to repeat this, what I've got in here. It's three cups of all-purpose flour, two and one-fourth teaspoons of baking powder, and one and a half teaspoons of baking soda. So that's what was in my flour. And now I'm going to put one-third cup of some good baking cocoa. And we've got one and a half cups of sugar. I'm 
And this might work better if I had it plugged in. Okay. I'm just going to kind of mix my dry ingredients up a little bit. Now all we got left is one and a half cups of mayonnaise. And what your mayonnaise does is it, it takes the place of your eggs and your oil or your shortening. You're not going to be able to taste the mayonnaise. In fact, back in the day, a lot of the women used Miracle Whip instead of mayonnaise because that's mostly what they had was Miracle Whip. But we're going to be using mayonnaise. One and a half cups. Now, my recipe calls for water, and that was the that was a very this is a very old recipe that I've got, and they use water. I'm going to use one and a half cups of milk. Now, you could also gild the lily on this and use a cup of milk and a half a cup of very strong coffee. I didn't have any coffee made, so I didn't. I didn't do that. So we need one and a half teaspoons of vanilla. And that's it. Okay, I switched over to my my beater, my whisk attachment. My other one just was not doing a good enough job for me. So I'm going to scrape down the sides. Get some of that flour that's stuck there on the sides. Then I'm going to finish mixing this up. I've got a 9 by 13 baking dish. I've got it sprayed real good. You can use a bunt pan or you can use two 9 inch uh, cake pans. And I tasted the batter. And a lot of people ask me my video where I'm making the three ingredient hot rolls with mayonnaise. Miss Lori, can you taste the mayonnaise? No, you can't. And you can't taste it in this batter either. The, the mayonnaise takes the place of the eggs and the oil or shortening, whichever you use in the recipe. I mean, that's, that's, that's what mayonnaise is. This is going to be a very moist. I did taste the batter. The batter is really good. It does, you cannot taste the mayonnaise in it, and there is a cup and a half of mayonnaise in it. So I got my oven heated to 350. It's 
kind of drop it once or twice. Don't bust your pan. So 350, I'm going to check it in about 30 minutes and uh, see if it's done. Okay, now let's make some chocolate frosting for this cake. Okay, we've got five cups of powdered sugar. We've got a third of a cup of good cocoa, baking cocoa. We're going to put just a pinch of salt in there. I'm going to bring this up. And I'm just going to stir this around this minute. I just want to incorporate all this just a little bit before I put my other ingredients in. Now, I've got two whole sticks of real butter. The real deal. I'm going to put in a teaspoon of vanilla. And I'm going to start out with four tablespoons of milk and then we'll go from there. You're going to need anywhere from four, let's do one more, four to seven tablespoons of milk. Okay, to get the consistency that I wanted, I put about six tablespoons. So you just have to put four in and then try it and just go from there. So thanks guys for hanging out with us. I love it when y'all come and, and hang out in the kitchen with me. Sometimes to get a video done, that's just what we have to do. I've got grandkids here. It's the next day. It's raining. It's fixing to start sleeting. Uh, that temperature is just about to get right for the ice and the sleet. But you can hear the kids in the background. Paul's back there playing. So they're hooting and hollering. But anyways, I appreciate y'all watching, hanging with me. I'm going to turn y'all around here just for a minute. You can see, you can't really see the rain coming down, but you can see that it is raining. And like I said, the temperature's fixing to get just right, and the weather's fixing to get just right. But we're in for the long haul. We got heat. <clears throat> And if the electricity goes out, we still have heat and everything that we need. So we're good. So I pray that everybody stays safe within this uh, ice storm that's supposed to be coming in. And uh, we'll be seeing y'all in a few days. Not sure. Um, I got some canning to do. Not sure if I'm going to get that done because I don't have all my, my fruit here at the house. Some of it's in a different deep freeze. Uh, I was wanting to put some blueberries and peaches and stuff that I've got in the freezer that I won't can. But uh, not time for gardening for sure. Not not on this hill. Not with the weather being the way that it is. But anyways, I, I want to say bye to y'all and thank y'all for hanging around with me. We made that mayonnaise cake that everybody was, a lot of people were commenting on wanting to see the, the old-fashioned recipe. So we got that done, and it is really good. It's really moist cake, and that icing was delicious. So God bless everybody. We'll see you all in a few days. Y'all be careful. Like I said, if you are in the path of this weather, be very careful. And y'all stay warm, and we love y'all. See you next time. <laughs>